Okay, so let's finish adding the support edges here. And before we do that, we need to actually uh, do a little work on the back. I'm just going to go to Polygon. We'll select a Polygon here and hit Z. Okay, so we can uh, kind of zoom in there and see what's going on. All right, and you can see this uh, edge loop here that we had running up the back of the spoke uh, just ends off right here. Uh, so we're going to need to kind of uh, weld this somewhere here so we can terminate this edge. Okay, and this is not the ideal way to do this, but uh, because it's on the back of the spoke, I'm just going to do it quickly by welding this vert to the corner here. Okay, we'll do that on the other side. Oops, let's go to target weld. And just weld that over to that one. Okay, we're gonna need to do that on uh, each of the spokes here, and I should have done it before uh, we actually uh, rate it, but we can just clean it up quick. All right, so same thing on each one. Weld that back one to the corner. Okay, if you're having a little bit of a problem seeing it, uh, just grab a vert and hit Z. It'll zoom in on it. Whoops. This one up to here. Okay, and let's work our way up here. Well, then these as we go. Okay, so that one to there. This one up to here. Yeah, I could probably actually do this from the back. I'll just do it from the front so it's a little easier to see. Okay, so just keep working along the back to uh, weld these to the corners until you make it all the way around. Okay, I think that's uh, all the way. Okay, I just want to make sure that I didn't miss any here, so let's just grab a face and we'll zoom in. Okay, we can actually test it by just doing a ring on the back edge here. We'll do a ring on that. If it rings around, then you've got all the welds. Okay, so now we need to add a little bit more support here. So another connect, and let's do two. No pin, uh, no slide, and we'll just pinch that out a bit. Okay, so pretty much the same process as we did on the front. Uh, let's take it up to about 95 and okay, and we'll do the exact same thing on the back here. Just connect these up with pairs uh, to support these edges. Alright, let's do about 70 on that guy, and another ring on this edge, another connect. Take that up a little bit more. Uh, we'll do about uh, 87, 88, something like that. Uh, for the outside here, we'll do uh, two segments as well, and we'll just dial that down a bit. Let's do about 20 on that one. And the exact same thing here on the top. Let's grab one of these. Another ring, another connect, and we'll just do that about 20 as well. And same thing on the inside here. Sharpen this up a little bit by just pinching those out a little bit more. Let's do about 50. And we also need to add one more edge here on the back, so let's ring this top edge and connect it up one segment. No pinch, and just slide that over to the uh, outside there. And we'll do about 99 again on this one, and OK. Okay, so we're almost there. Uh, we still need to do something with the center. So let's go maybe into the uh, right view again. I'm just going to zoom in on the center here and we'll go back into the display panel and uncheck hide frozen objects. Let's also switch this back to the left view. 
Okay, we'll just zoom in here. Let's uh, turn on transparent here. Okay, and you can see that uh, we kind of have the lug nuts there in the center just kind of sunk into the surface. Um, it's a little hard to see on the blueprint, but uh, this should be pretty simple for us to do. Uh, let's select that front border here. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to scale that out a bit. Okay, so we'll scale it out to the outside. I'm going to leave it a little bit in more than it uh, looks on the blueprints to about there. Okay, we'll go back in this perspective here. And I'm just going to go to move, and with the border selected, I'm just going to hold down shift and drag that in on the x axis to kind of extrude those faces in. Okay, like that. Then we'll go back to scale, hold down shift, scale it on the uh, triangle here to kind of extrude it in, and we'll just check to make sure that that's uh, far enough. Let's bring it in a little bit more. Okay, I want to make sure we have enough room to put those bolts in the center. And we'll just extrude it out again, maybe here. Okay, so use the move tool on the x-axis. We'll bring it out maybe about even with the rest of the rim. And we'll hold down shift in the uh, left view and just scale it a little bit more here. I'm going to go all the way until it closes up, pretty much. Okay, like that. And we'll control click vertex. That vertex is uh, selected around that hole. And we'll just weld those together into one point. All right, so let's take that up until it snaps into one point. And when you're done the weld, you should only have one vert selected. Okay, that'll kind of cap off the front of the rim for us. So now we can support the shape. So back to edge, grab one here, ring, pack that up with two segments, no slide, and just pinch those out a bit. Uh, probably about uh, 60 should be good. Exact same thing on the inside here, a ring and a connect. Take it up a little bit more. Let's do about 75 maybe, maybe about 80. Yeah, we'll just repeat that process in all these edge uh, rings. Okay, and depending on how sharp you want it to look, you can uh, adjust these edges independently. All right, and same thing here, another ring and another connect. And for the front here, uh, let's just grab these center edges. And we'll do one more connect on that with one segment and just slide that out to the outside to uh, support this corner here or this edge. All right, so I'll pretty much take care of the front. Um, we still need to do the back, so that'll be pretty simple. Uh, let's just close it up. So I'm going to grab the back border now. I'm going to just scale that up a bit. All right, I'm going to use that as a support edge on the back. All right, so I'm just going to leave that down a little bit like that. And then we'll hold down shift and scale a little bit more. And we'll maybe leave one segment in the middle here just to help it smooth. And we'll hold down shift one more and do the exact same thing here. Just close it up as much as you can get. Control click vertex and weld that up into one point. Okay, so I know that was a little bit of a, a tedious task, but I think we're pretty much done with the shape here. We just need to. Uh, Smooth it out and see if we have any errors we need to fix. All right, so let's uh, get rid of those blueprints again for a second. So we're going to slow the capture down. And we'll just throw a turbo smooth back on here. Okay, we'll do two iterations and ice line, and we'll just see how this looks. Okay, it's obviously not a super realistic rim here with the back. Uh, that's not what they actually look like. But uh, for the sake of the overall style of the truck, uh, this is fine. Okay. And it looks like everything's actually smooth and pretty good here. We don't look like we have really any artifacting, which is good. And our spokes seem to be holding up pretty well. So I think that's probably uh, all we need to do on the rim here. Uh, we do still need to do the uh, lug nuts as well as uh, a simple kind of brake rotor in the back there and then the actual tire. And the tire is actually going to be a little bit of a challenge to the model as well. Uh, we have quite a complicated uh, tread pattern on that. All right, but we'll tackle that next. And now would be a good time to save. Okay, so let's go back into the display panel here and we'll just uncheck the box again to get our blueprints back. And we'll go back into the left view. And the next thing we'll do is just model out those uh, lug nuts. Okay, so we'll zoom in on this again. And you can kind of see the shape of them there. All right, these will be pretty easy for us to model. So let's go back to the create panel and let's grab maybe a cylinder for this. Let's draw it out over the top one. Okay, don't worry about the size, we're going to figure that out in a second. Uh, we do want it to have uh, six sides, so we'll just take that up to six. Uh, we can get rid of these height settings, we don't need those. So 
just right click the spinner there. And we'll also just move this towards the uh, front here so we can see it. All right, so let's pull that out in front of the tire. Apply our blue shader to it. And let's get rid of those blueprints again. Okay, so let's maybe adjust the settings here a little bit. Uh, we don't need the radius to be too big. Let's just push that back a bit so it's kind of fit into uh, the rim. And we'll just do maybe around nine for the radius. Let's do about 10 on the height. Uh, one height segment, one cap segment, and six sides. And let's actually maybe give it another cap segment. Okay, and I think that should be good for stars. So let's right click and convert to Cinema Poly. Uh, first thing we'll do is go around the back and delete off the back polygons. So I'm just going to grab all the polys, deselect the front side so we have the back cap selected, and we'll just delete that out. And let's go over to Edge, grab this edge here, do a loop on that, and we'll scale this out a bit here. I'm going to do this in the left view so it's a little easier to see. All right, so let's go up to Scale and we'll scale that up. Uh, let's do something like that. Uh, go to Vertex, grab the center vert, control click polygon. And let's extrude this out. And let's bring it out maybe something like uh, five or six and OK. And we'll also make the uh, base here a little bit wider. All right, so I'm just going to go to Vertex, grab the front birds here, and we'll just pull it a little bit uh, wider. OK, that's a pretty basic shape here. Uh, let's also put something on the end. Let's maybe just use a capsule to uh, the top here. So. Back in the left view, we'll go up into the gray panel. Uh, let's pull this down to extended primitives and grab an oil tank. Draw that out of the center. Something like that should be good. Get a little bit of height and just roll the cap over a little bit. Okay, we'll also move this out in front. Right, so let's pull that out there. Let's increase the height a bit. Okay, we'll also add maybe uh, one height segment here. And I'm going to avoid trying to, uh, or I'm going to try to avoid smoothing these. So let's take the sides up a little bit more. Let's do maybe 20. And we'll just roll over the cap head a little bit more to round it out. Let's do about three on that. Okay, we'll just push this back on the X so it, uh, it's sitting in the surface. And I think that should work fine uh, for our uh, lug nut here. So let's put the blue shader on it. And we'll see if that radius is okay. It's going to slightly decrease the radius to maybe five. And that should work fine. So now we'll convert it to turbo poly and delete off the back birds. Okay, so let's delete everything from uh, the center over. And we'll just slightly adjust the height here. And let's also center its pivot point. Okay, that should work fine. So let's uh, maybe reselect the cylinder here. Whoops. I'm just going to hit Alt Q and we'll just chamfer down some of these edges. So let's go uh, back to edge. Let's grab this one and maybe the front one. Loop those and we'll just roll them over a little bit. Let's do about 0.6. Let's also get this one here. So loop that edge and chamfer and we'll tighten this one up a little bit more. So that should be good. And let's also maybe just uh, give these a second champ here. So I'm just going to grab these two edges here, as well as the two ones here. Do a loop. We'll just do a little bit more of a tight champ on these, just to sharpen those edges up. Okay, I wanted to have kind of a flat edge uh, on each section. Okay, we'll also do the side edge. So let's grab one here, do a ring and a loop. And we'll just champ that all at once. Let's take it up a little bit more. And something like that should be fine. We'll do about 0.35 and OK. Let's get out of isolation mode here and we'll see how that looks. OK, so really simple. Let's also move a champ for this edge here on the uh, oil tank before we clone it. All right, so back to edge for this piece. Loop this one and give it a chamfer. And we'll just tighten that up, something like that. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, 
Okay, if you want to, you can uh, maybe put a smooth modifier on here just to get rid of some fosting. Uh, we'll see if it makes any difference. Let's just try it. Let's go down and put a smooth on. We'll hit auto smooth. Okay, and that still looks uh, a little bit crappy there. Uh, let's delete that. Let's maybe put a turbo smooth on and see if we can uh, hold the shape here. Whoops. Okay, I'm just going to leave a turbo smooth on there uh, with one iteration. And you don't need to do this. This is a really small detail. So if you're concerned about the poly count, you can actually just leave that off. Uh, you'll never notice that fostering from a distance. Okay, so let's uh, maybe grab both these pieces here and let's just do a group on them. Okay, we'll just call that lug maybe 01 and okay. And we'll go back to the left view one more time. I'm just gonna grab the rim here and make sure that the pivot point is centered. So it looks like it's right in the center there. Let's reselect the lug nut here and we'll center the pivot on the group here. And with the button just to do press, I'm actually gonna align it to the rim. Okay, so we're gonna go up to the line tool and click on the rim and we'll do X, Y, Z and we'll just do uh, pivot point and pivot point and okay. Okay, now should move the lug nuts pivot point right to the center of the rim, which is where we need it for the array to work correctly. All right, so we'll turn the button off now and we'll go up to tools and back down to array. All right, let's uh, put our settings back in here, 360 degrees on the Z. We want copy and we want seven of these. So let's hit okay to that. And that'll give us our uh, lug nuts there. Okay. And if you want to, you can come in with the rotate and just give these a little bit of a spin just to change it up a little bit. But I think I'm just gonna skip that for the tutorial. Um, the next thing we'll do is put in the brake rotor. Okay, so let's get the blueprints back. We'll go back into the display panel, uncheck hide frozen objects. Let's just actually right click and unhide all. Okay, to get our blueprints back. And we'll just select the pieces of the rim here. Okay. And let's do control I and hide select it. Okay, so let's go back into the left view now. And we'll start working on the brake rotor here and it's gonna be really, really simple. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about cutting any drill holes in it or anything like that. We'll just do pretty much a basic cylinder. All right, so let's go back to the crate panel and switch this back to standard primitives. And let's just grab maybe a cylinder here and we'll draw that out in the center of the rim. Okay, we'll take it up until it pretty much is the size of the rotor there. Give it a little bit of thickness and we need to up the sides here. So let's do it maybe like 60. Uh, so it's pretty smooth and we'll just adjust the radius a little bit here. Okay, so let's try to match it up. Let's do about 93 on the radius. And we'll just do maybe about 15 or so for the height for now. Uh, with two cap segments. Alright, so we'll move this over. Okay, we'll put it inside the rim here. And it's way too thick right now, so let's take the height down. Let's do maybe about 8. And we'll move that forward slightly here. Let's also put our blue shader on it. Okay, that should work for size. Uh, so let's convert this federal poly now. All right, we're gonna go up on the top here. Just gonna grab a top edge. Zoom in on that. Let's do a ring on that edge and let's do another connect here. Okay, I'm just gonna go in isolation mode of Alt Q. Okay, we'll open up our connect again here. Okay, so we're gonna do two edges here. Uh, let's pinch them together a little bit more. Let's do about negative 30 or so on the pinch. Maybe a little bit higher than that. Let's do about negative 20 with two segments and no slide. Okay, and we'll just kind of extrude this in so it looks like there's uh, two pieces here. Okay, so let's grab the center edge there. Another ring, control click polygon. And we'll just extrude this in by local normal. All right, so let's take the height down to a negative amount and we'll just punch that in the top a bit. Let's do about uh, negative 3.5 and okay. And we'll just give these edges a quick chamfer here. So I'm gonna grab uh, the four top edges, another loop, another chamfer, and we'll dial that down a bit. 
maybe about 0.35 and okay and if you want to you could actually do the two in the uh, crack here uh, it's probably not necessary but i'm going to do it anyways so grab an edge on each side of the hole there and loop those edges okay just like that and we'll just check for that as well okay so that should be good And we'll maybe just uh, pull out a piece here in the center uh, to set it on the rim. Let's maybe get out of isolation mode for a second. Okay. And let's we'll look at this in the front view. Okay. Let's grab an edge on the center loop here. We'll do a loop on that. I'm just going to scale it down slightly here so it uh, better matches up with the size of the uh, main part of the rim. Okay, so we're just going to go to scale and we're going to slightly scale this down. Okay, something like that should be good. And let's also center this piece uh, to the rim again. Okay, so we'll go up to the line tool and we'll just click on the rim. Uh, choose the same options here and hit OK. Just so everything's centered. And now we can just extrude this out a little bit. Alright, so let's grab the center vertex, control click polygon. And we'll just open the up extrude here and take it up to a positive amount. I'm just going to pull that out a little bit. Let's do about 10 and OK. And then we'll just go back to edge and just chamfer down these two edges here. OK, so just do a loop on those and a chamfer. Take it up a little more. Something like that should be fine. OK, so pretty simple. All right, I'm just going to push it a little bit closer to the back of the rim here. So let's move it forward on the X axis. Let's look at this in the side view. And I'll leave it about there. Okay, I'm going to spin around the back here. Let's go into wireframe for a second. And let's actually maybe just grab the rim for a sec. I'm going to hit Alt-Q. We'll zoom in on the back here. We're going to pull this out a little bit farther than what we have. Okay, so let's drop back down to the edit poly. Same process here. Select the center vert. Control click polygon. And we'll grow this twice, okay, so we get that support edge. And let's do an extrude. Okay, so we're going to extrude that a little bit more. Uh, we'll just do about 10 or so for now. And hit OK. And then we'll get a isolation mode here so we can see the other piece. And we'll just uh, extrude that enough so it pretty much touches up with the rotor there. Okay, so it's right about there. And we'll finally uh, maybe just add a couple of extra edges to the back here to hold the shape. Okay, so let's get our edge. Hold Q one more time. Zoom in here, drop back down, and we'll just add one more support edge right around the uh, top side here. Okay, so let's do a ring right here. Another connect, one segment, and just slide that towards the back. And we'll go pretty close, maybe about there, 80 or so, maybe 85, and okay. Okay, now I'll keep a, a hard edge there, which is what we want. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So let's get a isolation mode one more time. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, let's maybe throw a smooth modifier on the rotor here and just see if it can uh, help us out. We have a little bit of fauceting there. Okay, so go down and find a smooth modifier and check auto smooth. Okay, now let's smooth out some of the fauceting there on that extruded piece. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, that'll pretty much take care of the rim and the bolts. Uh, the next thing we'll do will be the actual tire and this is going to take a little bit of time. We have quite a complicated uh, tire tread to work on.